Hello everyone, I have a very special video for you here today. How about instead of giving you a 10 for life, which is uh, kind of like the norm of, uh, you know, videos that you get out there from a lot of different influencers telling you 10 for life, I can't live without these. How about I share with you some 10 fragrances that will change your life? I know these fragrances changed my life and you're gonna find out why and perhaps they can change yours. Let's hop into it. Welcome back to another video, Max Forte here. If you do love to make a great and lasting impression, you know that smelling good is a great way to do that. It's a great start. But not only that, if you're also sick of more of the same, know that on this channel, I share with you some incredible, unique, exotic, and exclusive fragrances, just like the 10 I'm about to show you in this video. So without any further ado, 10 fragrances that will change your life. They were life-changing for me, and this is why. Uh, when you start dabbing into the fragrance world, especially when it comes to niche, by the way, let me define niche for you. What do I think niche stands for? So niche to me, when it comes to perfume, means limited quantity or limited production. It also means exotic, uh, you know, qualitative or quality ingredients. So we're talking about the best ingredients you can possibly find, limited quantities, you know, limited production, exclusiveness. That's what niche means to me. So I think all 10 brands I'm about to share with you will have Everything that I talked about will check all the boxes. And when I went into the proverbial rabbit hole, when I started searching Google and I wanted to find unique fragrances, you know, not your, you know, run of the mill or more of the same within the designer world. You know, I wanted to find companies that thought outside the box, you know, think outside the box, if you will. These fragrances just opened my eye, opened my mind, opened my nose, if you will, to this whole world of possibilities. So without any further ado, let me tell you right now, kicking off the list here with one of the fragrances I believe was released in 2007. I found out about this fragrance, doing a search, looking for something unique to wear, something to give me an edge. And this is the fragrance that I discovered. You know, back in the day when you looked at Google, you know, you searched, you found a half dozen or so, a handful of channels here on YouTube or on social media. There weren't many to pick from, but this is a fragrance that somebody hyped up so much. And I was like, you know what? This sounds interesting. It sound, sounds something like I would really enjoy. So I went out, blind bought this guy, and this is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Could very well ma you know, make a top 10 for life, but we're talking about groundbreaking, um, you know, fragrances that open my mind to the world of niche perfumery. This particular fragrance, absolutely incredible. You do have lavender here, but you also have a heavy dose of jasmine. This is extremely aromatic. I like to consider this a woody floral musk because it's definitely woody. You definitely have a lot of floral components. The woodiness will come through as it dries down, but definitely very floral here and very musky. And when I say musky, I mean sensual. This is a seductive juice and definitely a compliment beast. Reflection, and I'm sure you heard of it if you haven't, was one of the fragrances that I bought it was my first purchase actually, along with the one I'm gonna to talk to you about next. I purchased this as something for like spring and summer and early fall. And then the other fragrance I'm gonna share with you was something that I really wanted for the cool weather. So this was my first discovery into the niche world of things. You know, the fragrance that really opened the gates, the floodgates, if you will, to niche uh, perfumery. Now, subsequent to that fragrance, I, like I said to you guys before, I wanted to find something heavier, something exotic, unique, powerful for the cold winters that I get here in the tri-state area, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, New York, you know, which is where I used to work back then. And this is a fragrance that I absolutely fell in love with. This is going to be a fragrance from Frederick Mall is the brand. Uh, Maurice Roussel is the nose, which he works fantastically with the note of lavender. You're going to see a lot of commonality here with the fragrance that I'm sharing with you because it's, it, it talks in lengths about my taste. But like I said, also, you know, these are very exotic juices. They're not your run of the mill. These are very unique in their own manner, in their own way. And this one here, of course, Musk Ravageur from Frederick Mall. This is actually a vintage bottle. I believe this was my second bottle. I also have a, a you know, current formulation, which I'll pop on the screen. Uh, what you'll see here on the transitions are going to be the actual current formulations, uh, which are going to be a little bit weaker when it comes to performance. But Musk Ravageur is a beast. But here's the thing though, the funny story, the, fu the funny anecdote when I bought this fragrance was about uh, mid-July, so it was very hot. I wore this fragrance and I almost threw up in the car because I was driving, you know, in the confines of my car, so it was very hot. I didn't have the AC on, I was wearing this and I almost choked myself, I was coughing. But the funny thing is I put this aside when, as soon as the weather started to get cold, you know, late September, early October, I pulled this back, you know, from my, from my collection, started wearing it, never looked back. It opens up very bold, very spicy. We've got cloves, cinnamons, resins, the lavender, of course, which, which is very bold in this one. Uh, there is some musk here, but it's not the main player. The lavender is definitely the main player along with the spices. 
And I'm telling you right now, the magic of this fragrance begins after the 40 minute mark. When it gets into the heart of the scent, into the dry down, it smells like a delectable, delicious, mouthwatering, warm Cinnabon. That's simple. This stuff here is amazing. When you heard back in the day, when I first discovered this, this fragrance hyped up here on YouTube, people used to say this was essential beast and it was gonna get you, you know, uh, I don't like to use that word here, but a penny dropper type of a scent. Um, I didn't get any of that, you know, I got a very complex fragrance that was very uh, transitional. It started off a certain way, developed, and then ended up a completely different way from when it began. But one great thing about this fragrance, like I said, the magic does begin in a sensual manner if you do have the patience to wait uh, those 40 minutes when it really gets into that Cinnabon uh, type of a vibe. That's when this fragrance is delectable. So don't, spray the, don't, don't, don't expect to spray this on and get great you know, compliments or um, great reactions, because you won't. But if you do spray this on, wait 30, 40 minutes, leave the house and meet people at the dry down phase of this fragrance, you will absolutely make a statement in a very positive way. This is, again, if I was if I was doing a top 10 for life, this would de definitely make the list. Very strong uh, feelings about this fragrance. Great place in my heart. Musk Ravageur from Frederick Mall. So I just gave you two of my first niche purchases. This, this next one I'm about to share with you was actually right after I bought these two. I was looking for something still heavy, still uh, powerful for the New York winters, and I fell in love with Musk Ravageur, so I wanted something uh, as powerful, but this time a little more gourmandy, a little more, uh, you know, smelling like something I would lo love to eat. And, you know, loving pancakes, loving uh, maple syrup, lo loving coffee, you know where I'm going here. If you do follow the fragrance world, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. If you, if you don't, you're gonna love to discover this. Now, this fragrance here is from bun number nine, and this was a fragrance that was, for a while, uh, said to be discontinued because it was very hard to find. You couldn't find this anywhere, and it was fetching, you know, two to $300 for a used bottle. It is back in stock now. You can find this at Bond Number no. 9 or places that sell Bond fragrances. And this, of course, New Harlem is the fragrance. It smells literally like breakfast in the bottle. We're talking about pancake batter. We're talking about gorgeous maple syrup. Beautiful coffee. Now, the coffee here is not gonna be your coffee beans type of scenario. It's gonna be more of a coffee macchiato or a coffee drink, a little bit of a caramel action here, but definitely a ton of maple uh, syrup kind of a vibe here gourmand coffee, uh, the batter. It is just absolutely incredible. If you do love gourmand fragrances, this is something that I highly recommend uh, for cool weather only though, because this is a powerful fragrance. If you do wear this in the heat, you will definitely choke yourself and those around you for sure. But I think all the fragrances on this list are great because number one, they're going to be androgynous. Number two, they were going to be, uh, you know, for the most part, crowd pleasing, but not so much in the beginning. They might be a little bit too much like Musk Ravageur, but overall they're gonna be, you know, quote unquote, universally appealing if you have the patience to wear them. Um, there are others are more than, than, than the other ones. Uh, this one here, if you do have a sweet tooth, you like gourmand fragrances, it's gonna be great. But like I said, don't pull this off in the high heat because it's not gonna be proper for that. If you live somewhere where the weather gets cold for long periods of time, like I do here in New York, this is a great one to check out. Now, the next one here that I'm gonna be sharing with you is going to be one from the House of Creed. Now, a lot of people always talk about Creed Aventus. Uh, there's a lot of fragrances from Creed that people tend to gravitate towards. This guy here wanted to find something a little bit more unique and, you know, when it comes to Creed itself, the brand itself, my favorite Creed fragrance of all time is not even on this list because it's been discontinued, vaulted, whatever, very hard to find. And it's one that's not gonna be universally appealing because it, it, it you know, it harps into old school uh, perfumery. We're talking about not Millicene Tabaron, but original Tabaron, which is my favorite Creed of all time. But this one here is right up there. I, I believe it's, at this point, my favorite from what's available currently, and it's gonna be Spice and Wood. I discovered this fragrance, I believe in 2011, uh, right at the end of 2011, 2012, they were releasing a commemorative uh, collection. This was part of it. Back then, I think this was $550. I think nowadays, it's close to a thousand. Don't quote me on that. This is my second bottle of this over the last decade. I love spice and wood. To me, it smells just heavenly. We have this beautiful red apple up top, uh, some floral components here, perhaps rose, jasmine, but I also love the woods in the base. So spice and wood is very fitting to the name. You're gonna have some spices here, such as cloves, cinnamon, but then the woods are absolutely heavenly. We're talking sandalwood, a little bit of vetiver. It is just 
I think there's even some patchouli here also, which is like a green patchouli, not so much a cocoa patchouli. It's more of a dry scent, a fruity dry scent, spicy and woody at the same time. But that red apple just sings on my skin and this smells very refined, very well put together. Not too mature, but definitely uh, made to measure kind of a feel, refinement and uh, you know classy elegance in the bottle. Spice and wood, definitely incredible one. And definitely, you know, I have, pretty much everything Creed ever put out. And I'm telling you right now, this is definitely a special scent. If you're looking for something different, not, not more of the same than everybody talks about Aventus, Millicent Imperial, you know, the usual suspects, this is going to be giving you that elevated feel. It's gonna make you stand out from the crowd and you're gonna smell uh, unique, especially because it's a special collection. Uh, and I think there's a, another size, uh, which I believe is a 75 mil, which is still pricey. So for the most part, people tend to not get these, uh, you know, this type of not mainstream creeds because they're a little bit pricier, but I like that they're a little bit pricier because it gives you that edge. One of the fragrances that I discovered right around that time, 2012-ish, uh, was this fragrance here from this brand that I spoke to you guys about it in the last video. This is of course the House of Effective Studio from Paris. This is Chambre Noir or Dark Room. I love this fragrance to me. The name evokes uh, sensuality, uh, mystery. You know, it's a mysterious, dark, and sensual fragrance. It's simple. It's a simple way to describe this, you know, mysterious, dark, sensual. It is an absolutely incredible fragrance. This is a leather-based scent. Again, I talked about this in the previous video where I'm highlighting the best. It's a series of videos here on this channel that I'm highlighting the best niche brands of all time. And Olfactive Studio is definitely one of those brands that was highlighted in the video before. This is actually the new presentation. I do have an older bottle. And what this is, this reminds me a little bit of a lighter or more wearable version of M7 from Yves Saint Laurent, which is going to be an oud-based scent with leather, uh, spices. Now, that particular fragrance from Yves Saint Laurent has oud, this one does not, but it's also a leather, uh, dark, resinous fragrance that is, like I said, a more wearable version of M7. If you don't know M7, you're not gonna know what I'm talking about, but that fragrance was way ahead of its time, so it kind of flopped, it's discontinued, hard to find, but this here is a niche and more wearable, believe it or not, version of that fragrance. Love this stuff, I think there's patchouli also in the base, a little heavier this time. You know, not so much cocoa, uh, gourmand patchouli, but definitely a little heavier, a little darker. You have spices, you have resins in the leather. Is the star player of this fra fragrance and is a very also sensual, mysterious, and dark scent. Chambre Noir, Olfactive Studio. Check out this brand. They have some incredible gems uh, that I came to love over the years. I don't talk so much about this brand because they're not very easy to find uh, in the US, but you can find them. And again, I'm gonna have everything listed for you guys as always to make your life easier. If there's codes, savings, whatever the case may be, if you wanna try them before you buy them, you know you guys can try them at perfume.com, which is a partner of this channel. Details below, codes, again, savings, whether you wanna try it before you buy, if you're ready to commit to a bottle, again, all details in the comments to make your life easier. Now, at the sixth spot here, we're gonna talk about a brand that I discovered, again, early on my journey. And this particular one was a fragrance that just blew my mind. You know, I fell, fell in love with this fragrance, fell in love with the brand. Uh, don't like so much what happened to the brand over the last few years. They kind of rebranded, restructured, changed the bottles. I love this original bottle that I discovered this, this brand with, which is the brand of L'Artisan Parfumé, also from France. This is Zonka an incredible fragrance from one of my favorite noses in the game, uh, Bertrand du Chafaud. And this is going to be a fragrance that is also depictive. I had to spray because I love it so much. Um, I thank God I have a backup bottle of this. It has been changed. It comes in a dark bottle, which I'll pop it on the screen now. From what I understand, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit, uh, you know, not as good in performance as the original formulation. But the scent itself is gonna blow your mind and you're gonna love it. It's gonna be very appealing, but also unique and exotic at the same time. Zonka was inspired by the kingdom of Bhutan. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this country, um, but it's basically inspired by the mountains of Bhutan. So it's gonna be a spicy, resinous fragrance. It is absolutely ca captivating. It has a little bit of an incense vibe here. It's definitely resinous. It's got a little bit of a fruitiness up top, but it's not overly fruity. It's not overly anything but it has all these components that sing this beautiful dance and it's just very well balanced. So Zonka, to make it easier to understand, it's a combination between three incredible notes that I love. We're talking incense, iris, and vetiver. Of course, 
those are the main notes, the skeleton of the fragrance, but you also have some other resins, some other spiciness, some other woods in the base, but these are the three main players. Like I said, they sing a beautiful dance, making this fragrance sing on your skin. Trust me, it's one of those that's gonna act like a second skin or a perfect made to measure garment that's gonna make you stand out in a very positive way. I love this stuff. It's one of my secret weapons I'm sharing here with you today but it was one of my first early on niche discoveries that really opened my eyes, not only to the niche world of fragrances, but to the amazing house of L'Artisan Parfumeur. Speaking of pleasant, speaking of compliment inducing, speaking of unique, right? This particular brand has it all. And we're talking about an Italian brand of Serjoff. And this was basically my first experience with this brand. And when I try this fragrance from the Shooting Star Collection, it just blew my mind. I was like, what is this thing? It has heavy components, it has lighter components, and it's combined to make it such a special concoction. We're talking about Serjoff, Shooting Stars Collection, as I said before, and the fragrance itself is going to be Kobe or Kobe. I am in love with this fragrance. I've had multiple bottles of this fragrance over the years. And what this is, it's basically a green scent that has notes of oud, has notes of orange blossom, vetiver, rosewood, some fruits up top, mainly citrus fruits, like you know your bergamots, your mandarin oranges. But it has this resinous feel to the fragrance, almost like olive oil. Uh, the pedigree here plays a very key role. So it's green, it's a little bit resonant, it's definitely fruity, definitely aromatic, incredibly androgynous, unisex, whatever you wanna call it, but it is a compliment beast. It's one of my other secret weapons. Discovered this early on my journey. I believe I bought this first bottle. This is actually a third bottle. But the first time I bought this fragrance, I believe it was in 2010 or 11. I think it was released in 2009, you know, and this is just an incredible fragrance. If you're looking for something all around, great to wear anytime, anywhere, signature scent style, that's just gonna dress up or dress down and make you smell perfectly, Kobe or Kobe is definitely one to consider checking out. This would easily make a top 10 for life or a top 10 most versatile niche fragrances of all time. It is amazing, it checks all the boxes, a little bit pricey, but worth every penny for what you're getting here. Especially, you know, when you consider shooting star fragrances could be a little bit more on the pungent side, this is going to be powerful, but, but also very wearable and very universally appealing with that niche edge to it, which to me, it just makes this fragrance so special. Before I share the last three fragrances here on this video, which are absolutely incredible, I wanna also share with you that you can find and discover incredible perfumes that are niche by nature at one such event called Scent Explorer. Now, scentexplorer.com is a place where you're going to find what the event is all about, but I'm gonna share with you right now. Scentexplorer.com is actually a niche international hybrid event, which means what? You can join either in person in New York City, but if you can't make it to New York, no worries, the event goes to you. You will get, well, either way, if you register to come to New York or if you register to come virtually, there's other perks for virtually, like the giveaway that we're giving out for someone that registers virtually that will be able to travel to New York with their travel expenses paid by Le Parfum, which again, details will be below. But this is actually a prototype Scent Explore gift box that we're putting together for this year, which you'll have tons of samples to get uh, with this box if you register early on. Uh, there, there are gonna be 2,000 of these boxes that we're gonna ship out uh, to the first 2,000 attendees to register for the event, whether it's virtual or in person, doesn't matter, you will receive this box at your home. And the thing about this box, you're gonna get 35 to 40 samples, but not only the individual samples, you're also going to be receiving some discovery kits from the various brands that are with us this year. There's, there are over 70 brands uh, featured at Scent Explore, and this is the fifth annual we would love for you guys to join us either virtually or in person uh, sooner rather than later because I would love for you to get this discovery kit. Synth Explore every year features new releases from brands, exclusive releases, uh, pre-launches, so you'll be able to uh, experience fra fragrances firsthand before anybody else in the world has the chance to do that. So this happens every year. This is the fifth annual, December 1st and 2nd, uh, Friday and Saturday. Check out details below. Go to scentexplore.com so you can really understand everything. Don't delay if you do wanna get your Scent Explore gift box containing, like I said, 35 to 40 um, single samples from brands, but also a few discovery kits from brands. So you're going to be getting a lot of samples. And for the first time in the history of Scent Explore, we are shipping these box. This is a prototype, like I said. It's not the final box, but most likely it's gonna be this big and you're gonna be getting a ton of samples from the brands shipped straight to your door. Details below, I will see you at Scent Explore on December 1st and 2nd. Let's continue with the list here. This fragrance here, if you do love tobacco, you must, there's no two ways about it. It's one of the best 
tobacco-based scents in the world from the house of Serge Lutens, which has pulled away from the US at this point, but you can still find this, and this is going to be Cherki. It has been reformulated a couple of times. This is another fragrance that I've talked about in my series of best niche brands in the world. But Cherki, ladies and gentlemen, if you love, this is absolutely heavenly. It's one of my favorite fragrances. This is another one that would most likely make a top 10 for life uh, fragrances niche. No questions about it. You have a hay note, you have a Samantha's flower. This has this just full, deep, um, you know, just gorgeous tobacco note here that's borderline gourmand. It's gonna be sweet, it's gonna be playful, it's gonna be elegant, they're refined. And just like Zonka that I talked about before from Actes and Perfumier, this has a gorgeous combination of vetiver, incense, and iris. Along with the hay note, that tobacco note, you also have a delicious honey note here, making this an incredible elixir of indulgence. Guys, if you haven't tried Shergi, you're missing out big time. Get yourself a sample. Try this. I'm telling you, you will fall in love. This is one of the scents that I remember trying this. Uh, Barney's New York, which is now closed. It doesn't exist anymore. But I remember going to the uh, niche section of that store and smelling this for the first time. It was love at first sniff. I picked up a bottle and I've been loving this ever since. This is actually my second bottle. Uh, this bottle, like I said, has been reformulated. What you'll see here in the transition here is going to be the current formulation of this fragrance. From what I understand, it's gonna give you two to three hours less in performance, but the smell itself, it's gonna be incredible. And you know, if you wanna get more out of the fragrance, of course, you can spray your clothes, you know, get a decant uh, from perfume.com, carry with you. And then of course, you can always reapply during the day. And if you spray your clothes, you're gonna get better performance anyway, but you're gonna try it, get a decant from perfume.com, live with it when you love it, when you know the fragrance agrees with you, get a bottle. But Shergi is one that you should definitely try it if you love you know, tobacco scents, if you love unique scents, this is going to blow your mind. There's no two ways about it. Speaking about blowing your mind, this fragrance here originally released in 1985. The nose behind this fragrance is the actual brand name itself. Anique Cotal, this lovely lady, produced this fragrance with her husband in mind. She wanted to make a fragrance that number one, was unique to her husband. Number two, no one else would be able to smell like her husband. But then of course, this, after a while, was released into the mainstream, to the public, and it became what it is today, which is called Sables. Now this is a vintage bottle from the early 90s. This release was, again, a 1985 release. And Sables is an absolutely stunning, stellar masterpiece of a juice. Uh, what you find today, of course, I'm gonna pop it on the screen. The bottle itself is different than what you're seeing here. It's a more sophisticated looking bottle. The sad thing is it has been slightly reformulated because some of the stuff that you had here, you could no longer use in perfumery, so they had to adapt and adjust, making the juice a little bit lighter, if you will, but still incredibly in smell. The main notes here on Sables are going to be cinnamon, the immortelle flower, which I love, you got sandalwood as well, some spices in the base, black tea. So it is an absolute indulgent kind of a scent. It is absolutely incredible. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit smoky, definitely creamy, most definitely woodsy. So if you love creamy, woody, and spicy, and somewhat smoky fragrances, you're gonna love this. Sable is a masterpiece, as I said before, and it's one of those that I would highly recommend you guys try and before you buy it. Don't blind buy this because this is not gonna be for everyone. Much like a lot of the fragrances I talked about here in this video will not be for everyone, so I would definitely consider trying them before buying them. But if you haven't heard of Sables, guys, again, it's another one that you're missing out because it's a masterpiece. I highly recommend you guys at least trying. Um, and again, with a lot of fragrances, especially niche, you know, the way it worked for me when I tried some of the niche fragrances, you know, as I discovered and fell into this, this you know, this rabbit hole of niche fragrances, a lot of times I didn't love them to begin with and I had to revisit them as the years went by to kind of like, you know, oh, okay, I'm picking this note now or uh, this is something that I appreciate now. I didn't like it maybe, you know, three, four years ago, but now I do love it. And this is one of those scents that I think if you don't have a seasoned nose, it might smell a little bit weird to you but as you get more acquainted with new things and niche and unique and exotic fragrances, this, like I said, is a masterpiece. That's it, that's simple. This was a fragrance that was extremely hyped. Everybody wanted for two reasons. Number one, it smelled incredible. Number two, it was extremely hard to find. Basically, you could only find this at Guerlain Boutiques. Before you say anything, I do consider Guerlain to be just like, let's talk about watches here for a second, just for sake of conversation. You know, um, Jaeger or Jeje Lacotre is considered the watchmaker's watch. So I would say Guerlain is considered the perfume, perfumer's uh, perfume brand or the niche of niche because they've been around for so many years, hundreds of years, number one. And number two, they have revolutionized the world of fragrances ever since, you know, the 20s, let's say, with uh, Shalimar. Uh, and there has been a ton of other fragrances that they put out throughout the years. They were revolutionary, groundbreaking, trendsetting just like the one I'm about to share with you here. This is a 2005 release that I didn't, you know, get to hear about it until about 2010. Couldn't wait to get a bottle. Had to get 
the bottles from Canada, the Guerlain Boutique in Canada. The funny thing about this one, just like Mascara Vajour, I received this around summertime. I think this time was late May, early June. I tried it, I didn't like it. You know, I choked on it, it was warm. I was like, man, this is not for me. I put this aside, I actually sold one of the bottles. I kept one just for the purpose of revisiting it when the weather got colder. And thank God I did that because I'm talking about Lidge. This was known as Lidge because of the big name. It's L'Instant de Guerlain Eau Extreme. This is a masterpiece. This is actually an older bottle. There has been two reformulations. This is the first formulation. Then they released this again without the dark edges. Then it was released again with the bottle that we have today, which I'll pop it here on the screen uh, so you guys can see what it looks like. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration. And what this is, it's basically a gorgeous, creamy cacao, mandarin, and patchouli combination. You have the mandarin oranges up top, the patchouli in the base as well, which really makes this pop along with the cacao, the chocolatey feel, and also this beautiful mandarin orange, which gives this citrus edge to the fragrance. It's a very unique scent. It's gonna be another one that's not gonna be for everyone, but if you do enjoy cocoa-based scents, I wouldn't say that this is borderline gourmand, but it's not really a gourmand scent. Uh, the, the cocoa here is a little bit powdery, but also dry. The patchouli here is also dry, but then that mandarin is a little bit juicy up top. So it's a very, Strange combination. It's one of the fragrances that I also would like to say, you know, wait a few minutes. The first 10, 15 minutes could be a little weird, but as this warms up with your body chemistry, this is going to be a beast of a performer, number one. Number two, great for compliments. You're gonna smell unique and very, very appealing. L'Instant de Galant Extreme has that sensual, very appealing, very romantic kind of a vibe to it as it starts to warm up with your body chemistry. Other notes here, besides the notes we talked about, are going to be sandalwood in the base, which really makes this creamy. I think the sandalwood utilized here was absolutely incredible, making this creamier, even more sensual, more appealing as the fragrance warms up and dries down. Guys, thank you so much for the support. If you guys do enjoy the channel, don't forget to leave a like. It's greatly appreciated. Of course, I'll come back with the best niche perfumes of the world. That series will continue to live on. We're gonna have top fall fragrances coming up very soon. So if you do appreciate the channel, guys, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I will see you right back here with another video very soon. Take care.